Hi friends, welcome back to Amy of Hearthridge. And today I'm just sipping my peppermint, uh, big little peppermint. It's so good. It's like tangy and spicy. And um, I just added a little oat milk to it. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do, um, after my last video, I felt a little crazy. <laughs> like I really want myself to slow down and just enjoy reading and enjoy um, it made me nostalgic for all the books that I've read in the past that have just meant a lot to me. Um, I think um, I came to a lot of good books and reading as a young adult. Um, I did read a lot when I was a kid, but I read kind of what our small town library had or um, what was in my private school library. Um, so I read a lot of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys and all of those and those were wonderful. I read, read a lot of Patricia St. John um, and a few classics but not much. But then as I got to be a teen and young adult I started to read a lot more just broadly. And so I've been thinking kind of past uh, the last I'd say, say from the time I turned 20 to now. So the last 20 some years. Uh, what my favorite authors have been and why and just really enjoying thinking about them um, and one of the things that I've been doing in my reading journal I it's kind of morphed into a plan to slowly reread uh, the people that have really just touched my heart over the my years of reading and or just the backlist of people I've appreciated one of their works and so it led me down, um, I, this video is kind of inspired by a, uh, Emma, the bookish princess, a bookish princess here on YouTube. She does a variety of videos, but she does do quite a few book videos and I just love hearing her thoughts and quotations and different things she talks about. And uh, I definitely have some of the similar taste to her in my reading life and so I was this is very much inspired by her but also there was a couple of different people talking about classics and talking about um, you know rereading I'm a big rereader because I'm in search of the same thoughts and feelings and um, characters and um, things to contemplate that I read before I'm searching for that and so often I'll return to a favorite book and I'll reread it over and over again because I just love it so much. Um, I did talk previously a little bit about my favorite author, which is L.M. Montgomery. Um, and so I did kind of gush about her one video. And so this is probably my second auth favorite author that I'm going to talk about today. And um, I, to be honest, I have taken kind of a break from her because I read a lot of her stuff. For a few years, I really kind of binged on her stuff. And so I took a little bit of a break from her. And so now today I've been revisiting the, the volumes of her work that I have on my shelf. I've been slowly collecting all of her books over the years and I just love them. They're treasured friends. Some of them I've read multiple times and others I've only read once or not read yet. And I really want to slowly reread her work. And so, it, um, uh, and Emma at A Bookish Princess likes her too. And her name is Elizabeth Gouge. And often people kind of ask me what she's like. And I would definitely say she has a historical fiction bent to hers, but she does such a good job of um, just blending real reality with the spiritual and just like kind of just like a whimsical fairy dust edge to her story maybe even slightly a magical realism although you know she was writing um a while ago so i mean i don't think it would exactly be classified as that um you definitely have to be patient with her because she is not a fast gobble up read read she has she's pretty heavy on descriptions and just slow, tiny detail, but you will be richly rewarded if you give her time. Um, and I was just thinking through some of her stories and I want to just share, I'll be really, I'll try to be brief because there's a lot, 
So I just want to share some of her volumes that I have on my shelf and kind of my idea of slowly, I mean, this could, I put it in my 2022 reading journal, the back of my journal, but this could take me 10 years for all I care. It's not a rush. It's just like slowly appreciating her. Um, I'm going to start with my first, uh, or actually my most favorite of Elizabeth Gouge, and I've read this multiple times, and this is the copy I have. These are a lot of her things. I have some more too, but this is A City of Bells, and this is just a lovely story about a young man who's returning from a war. I'm trying to remember which war, the Boer War, so this is English. I'm sorry if I didn't say that. Elizabeth Gouge is English, and this is, he's returning from the war. He has some injury and he's just not quite ready to face all the family pressures and just his annoying family kind of um, and so he decides to take kind of a detour and go visit his grandfather and um, his grandfather is in the Anglican Church and um, they him and his um, uh, grandmother or I think it's his grandmother it might be um, her, his housekeeper I can't remember um, have adopted two children and are kind of taking care of two little children and Jocelyn decides to take over an abandoned bookshop and it was run by kind of a writer slash poet who disappeared so there's sort of a mystery um, definitely a light romance and there's sort of like this almost like the voices of the mysterious missing bookseller and poet writer are calling out to Jocelyn as he heals and just recovers in the small town and the children uh, Gouge does children really well um, they're mischievous and interesting and just um, her buildings and her places the cathedral have a life of their own and it's just really beautiful fascinating just so nostalgic for me um, so this has two companion novels and they are i'm pretty sure they're both children's stories so they maybe they follow the children more i have not i do not have them and i have not read them they're the sister of angels and then i believe it's henrietta's house they might be have other names that's annoying thing is some publications like if they're released in america they have a different name so i think henrietta's house sometimes is called the blue hills um but I noticed that, and I can link this down below, but I noticed that uh, there's a company called Girls Gone By Publishers in the UK who republish some of those. So I noticed there's like three or four, and I'm hoping to get those for my birthday this year to kind of start continuing to um, make, uh, you know, complete my Googe collection. Um, I'm so thankful because Googe has begun to get a little more popular in certain circles. And I had started collecting some of her stuff a little earlier, so I'm so blessed by that because it's a little harder to find hers. I mean, like, this is a mass market paperback, so this is not the beautiful hard copy. I know that there's um, some colorful copies. I feel like they're Hodder editions, H-O-D-D-E-R, and I don't have any of those, but I know that there are some of hers that are being reprinted in that, so that's cool. But anyway, this is my favorite. I really enjoyed this one and I hope to reread this soon and then get those other two. Um, this is probably one of my next is there's a trilogy and I, I have the old, an old copy of the middle one, but the trilogy is the Damerchais and it follows like this matriarch, Lucilla, or Luc Luc Lucia, I don't know how you say it, but, and um, it's set around World War II and this one is very interesting. It's very good about marriage and fidelity in marriage and our thoughts and just um, the choice to love people and to care for people even when it's hard. And I really love that she doesn't shy away from hard issues, but she does it in a very tasteful, um, like um, just really beautiful way. So she's talking about um, um, to, uh, Lucilla's grandson is, and she, and I believe it's the sister-in-law, kind of um, are sort of falling in love with each other, even though 
he's not married and she's married to another, uh, her, his brother. And this is done so well. Um, it's been a while since I read this first one. I tend to read The Pilgrim's Inn over and over again, which is the second in the trilogy. This is just beautiful. It has a beautiful Christmas um, feel to it. Just really magical tying together. They decide, the family and the, um, they decide to move closer to be near Lucilla. And they find this old Pilgrim's Inn and it's just a beautiful story of family and um, friendship and um, just um, learning to love again and just the children are done so well and one of my favorite characters in the Pilgrim's Inn is a girl, a really sweet young woman named Sally and just she's so Elizabeth uh, is she does have plots for sure but she's definitely more character driven but she does such a wonderful job with the characterization of people and and the nature and beauty tied into the stories and this one is just so lovely this is probably my second favorite behind a silver of uh, city of bells um in another trilogy so that the city of bells is in another trilogy and this is i think it's called the torminster um series this one and this one's called the dammer shea series so they're both trilogies um so that is just beautiful um I also have the, this is set on the Guernsey Islands, um, and it is beautiful. Again, a really good look at marriage and a family. This is, um, this is really interesting. It's about a mysterious shipwrecked man and, um, just again, family. There's wonderful children, um, wonderful, uh, just examination of love and family. Again, a very good um, character. The house in that, again, the house itself is sort of a character in almost a magical realism way. Um, this is short stories, I believe, that are based off of the characters in uh, Island Magic, and I have not read this one yet. This has been on my shelf. I found this uh, really inexpensively somewhere, and I haven't read it. Um, one that I wanted to mention, too, is uh, one that I kind of classify as the strangest of Gouges, and that's called The Middle Window, and I cannot find my copy. I know I have um, the mass market paperback copy, and it is just really interesting. It's set in Scotland, and it sort of has a little bit touch of a reincarnation theme, but it's not really. It's it's interesting. Um, Gouges did dabble in some of the uh, some of those kind of fringe um, spiritual beliefs. I believe she was her father, they were in the Anglican church. Um, he was, um, you know, I don't, not a rector, but he was something in the Anglican church. And so it's, that one's interesting. Um, I love it because I love the romance. It's really gentle and interesting. Um, and it, the Scottish countryside, the way she describes it, you just feel like you're there. And it's just, there's so many little poignant mo moments and beautiful phrases and things to just think on. Um, um, but I don't have that one because I can't find my copy. So, and then um, we have Gentian Hill. And um, this one is, oh, I want to say this is about a, a minister and his wife who's struggling where she lives and another older woman that lives with them. And I think I'm saying this right. Or that might be Rosemary Tree. Yes, Gentian Hill is about a little girl named Stella Sprigg. Um, I believe she's adopted and she's so sweet. And there's a doctor character in this one that I love. I'm pretty sure that's right. So just beautiful. I want to say this is not the Napoleon, Napoleon Wars or whatever you call them, but I, that might be when that one is. I'm going to fly through these now. Towers in the Mist. This is set in Elizabethan Oxford. Very interesting about another, a canon, I think, um, and his family. He's a widow, widower and his oldest, his daughters. It's really interesting. Um, take on different roles. They end up kind of having to raise their brothers and sisters and they have a formidable aunt and there's a uh, a poor boy who comes into town really interesting that the canon kind of takes under his wing um, 
Green Dolphin uh, Street is also known as Green Gel Dolphin Country. I know it, it, my daughter just read this, my oldest daughter finished it and she, she loved, she loved, she hated it so much she loved it. <laughs> this one is tough. It's about two sisters and some kind of hard things that happen and they kind of are, I heard this from somebody else and that was really interesting to me about Sense and Sensibility, Eleanor and Marianne and Jane Austen being foils to each other. And I think the two sisters in this one are very much that way. Um, they both love the same man. It's very interesting. Um, this is again set, I believe in France. Um, and there was movies and things made. I think Elizabeth Scrooge is known mostly for this one. Um, it's probably not my favorite, but I do like it. This one is lovely. Um, I think this is kind of the English Civil War. And I just recently found a mass market paperback of this too, which I was able to pass on to a friend. Um, so it's about the English Civil War and spies and uh, a Romani woman, which used to be called Gypsy, but I don't think that's how what we say now. I'm not sure um, who's kind of caught between two worlds because people are very prejudiced against her. I feel like she has maybe an English father and a Romani mother or something like that. And she's really good with herbs and there's kind of some fe hard feelings about that. And this is beautiful. And if you like gardening, oh, this is just gorgeous. And it has a sweet love story. Um, really interesting story. I The funny thing is, I don't tend to be a historical fiction. Sorry, I keep throwing books everywhere. A uh, historical fiction lover, but gouge, I could read till the cows come home. So, um, the rosemary tree. This is, I think, this is the one about a man comes to town, and there's like a vicar and his wife who are kind of unhappy, and it's the nanny, I think, uh, his old nanny lives with them because she's ill. I'm pretty sure, and a man comes to town who is in was somebody from the wife's childhood um and yeah so i really need to reread read that one um this one i recently read within the last couple years and this one is about it's uh, about a king charles the second and there is a there is a unknown history about lucy walter and goosh feels like she was married to charles um the second but there's some debate about that but this is based on if they were and it's really interesting because they're young they're kind of they feel like children to me um their love story and it's really sad but there's so many beautiful passages um oh here's a good picture of Gouge right on the back with her dog her lovely dress and her pearls um but that one i really enjoyed it i was surprised because i thought oh okay so you know this is uh, definitely, you know, a thicker material. And then this one, I have an ugly library sticker, but this one was one of my, was my favorite book of the year a couple years ago. Um, this is about a, I don't know what town, I always forget. It's about um, a dean of a cathedral, a shy dean, and the local poor watchmaker. And there's also a matriarch in this one, too. Um, a woman that also uses the watchmaker to keep her watches or her clocks going or whatever and um, this is just beautiful I, I can't even explain this this talks a lot it speaks a lot to class um, and it's just so beautiful a lot of the places the cathedral kind of has its own presence she definitely humanizes buildings and places and she does it in such a wonderful way um, one of my favorite quotes of all time is in this book, and it's, can mere loving be a life's work? And I just love that because of course we know love is not mere. It's really hard and it can be a life's work. And as a mother and a wife and a friend and someone who kind of lives in the slow lane of life, that is so inspiring and encouraging and just, this makes me want to go further up and further in. Um, and then this one is set in World War II, and I haven't read this for a long time, but I still remember the violinist. There's a man on the street, and um, and this is about 
basically a whole bunch of people that kind of converge in a castle because of World War II. So I don't know if they're like billeting there or something happens, but I remember it just being lovely that the violinist has stuck with me for years. Now, uh, M Miss Googe is also known for, um, oh, I have a few more, but she's also known for nonfiction and she's also known for editing things. I don't have all of that. I'm mainly showing you her fiction today, but um, I do want to um, talk just a little bit. I know this is longer, but um, one of her most, she wrote children's fiction too. One of her most famous ones is The Little White Horse. This takes a little bit to get into, but it is so lovely. Um, uh, this has also been credited for um, Rowling was inspired by this for some of her Harry Potter stuff. Um, it is just really fun. Um, it's kind of two Moonacre Manor. So a young girl and her companion, her father dies and leaves her kind of penniless. And so she has to go live with an eccentric uncle at Moonacre Manor. And there's magical unicorns and Mar um, Marmaduke, this little uh, servant of his uncle's who ma seems magical. And um, it really crosses the line with reality and spiritual truths and magical realism. And there's like a feud in the history of, in the past history of her uncle. And it, it's just lovely. There is a movie and it is so terribly done. However, I kind of like it. It's sort of campy and the costumes are weird and it doesn't have all the delightful things, but I sort of like it still. I know some people hate it, but I actually like it, but it's not really anything like, I mean, it's loosely based on the book. Um, this is another one of her kids ones. This is cute about smugglers, pirates. It's definitely told, it's actually kind of told through three animals. Um, so this was probably not my favorite, but it was told through three animals. She has another one called Lynette and Valerians for children. I can't find my copy. So, and then she has some different Christmas collections. This is Christmas stories. We loved this Lost Angel, the title story. There's more in here. Um, my friend gifted me this beautiful copy of her story. I saw three ships, um, illustrated by Margaret Tomes. This is just... The illustrations are just charming, so charming. Um, there's more, there's, again, she has the two children ones that are companions to A City of Bells, too. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other children ones. There probably is. I know she has a lot of collections, like The Well of the Star and all these ones, and I don't have those. So, slowly. Um, here is some of the nonfiction I have by her. So, this one is just her editing, and this is a beautiful... A collection of quotes and things and I've gone through this with my Bible reading they're not all Christian quotes necessarily but there's just so encouraging this is a beautiful um, look at Jesus's life um, she has a diary of prayer these are collections of prayers and things she has faith and peace maybe too this is her autobiography which was good and I have something on my Kindle called beyond the snow by someone else this is because this is her autobiography and it was good. Um, the places, a lot of the places you can go in England and kind of see the places they're inspired. So her towns are sometimes fictional, but they're inspired by a real place, you know. So Ely and, oh, I'm forgetting, Wells, I think. And these were places she lived with her father in the big cathedral or church of that area because her father was in the church. And so she would be inspired by them. So anyway, I know that was a little long, but I wanted to take some time to in introduce you to Elizabeth Goosh because she's not to be missed. And if you can uh, just give her a little time and patience, she has some really, some gems and some lines that are just so beautiful. So, all right, thanks for watching and I'll see you later, bye.